Danny Boom and welcome to a special episode of Recipe Rehab, sponsored by Everyday Health. On this episode, our culinary master, Chef Govin, is in the hot seat. Are you looking forward to taking some questions? I really am. He's answering questions from you, our viewers. How do you cut onions without crying? How do you get the most juice out of a lemon? How can we soften our brown sugar? He's sharing his secret cooking tips and tricks. We're going to give the tortilla a slight char. The almighty coffee grinder. Not really? just for coffee. And the best one yet is lighting a candle. Amazing. Showing us how to make a healthy 10-minute meal on the go. Well, what I'm going to do is a really simple stir fry. And he'll even unveil what he picks up at the grocery store. Good olive oil, always in my pantry. And with this, you can make a meal that'll last a week. That's all coming up now on Recipe Rehab. Mmm, delicious. Let's welcome the master of the kitchen, Chef Govin. How you doing? Doing fantastic. Now, Thank are you. you looking forward to taking some questions? I really am. All right. Now, we ask kids all across the country to submit their questions. Here we go. The first one comes from Caroline. Cutting onions always makes me cry. How do you cut onions without crying? Excellent question, Caroline, because you know what? Every chef in the world needs to know this answer. That's very true. Onions are one of those many ingredients that go in so many different recipes, and you gotta know how to cut them without crying. It's actually a gas that's released from the onion. Oh, really? So the first thing you wanna do is start off with a sharp knife, because if you're using a dull knife, it's going to actually bruise the onion a little more and release more of those gases. Another thing that you can do is put it in the freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes. No longer than that, because you obviously don't want to freeze it and like, change the character of the onion, but that also really helps. Cool. And the best one yet All right. is lighting a candle. You light really? a candle, yes, and basically the gas from the onion is attracted to the candle. Right, and then basically it doesn't get in your eyes. That's right. Okay. Chef Govin, how about another question? I'm ready. All righty. This one comes from Morgan. I love making hard-boiled eggs, but I never know how long I'm supposed to boil an egg. Any suggestions? How do we know our boiled eggs are done right? I do love eggs and deviled eggs. It's a good, healthy, quick snack to have. I basically start them from cold water. Okay. Okay? So you want to add just enough cold water to go right over the top. So what we're going to do is basically bring these eggs to a gentle boil. We're going to turn it off, put the lid on, and wait about 15 minutes or so. All right, so these have been in the water for about 15 minutes after they boiled. We're going to take them out, put them in a little bit of ice water just to cool them down and stop the cooking process, basically. And then we're just going to peel them. An easy way to peel it is just to crack it gently and to lightly roll it, just like so, okay. on a towel. And then we're just going to go ahead and peel it. And as you'll see, the texture is going to be really nice. It's not going to be rubbery. The shell comes off really nice and easy. Yolk's going to be really nice and yellow. It'll be cooked all the way through, just like that. That's a perfect egg. That's beautiful. OK. Thanks, Morgan, for your question. I hope you enjoy those boiled eggs. Now, Chef, we have another question here from Kayla. I love avocados. Is there any way I can ripen my avocado quickly? How do we ripen an avocado if it's not ripe enough? It's a very good question. We're going to put it in a brown bag, and I'm sure you've heard that before. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put a banana in the same bag as well. Are you making me lunch? Uh, no, what I'm doing, there's actually a natural gas in the banana, like the ripening trigger, that's really? going to help that avocado along. In two days, it's going to be ripe and ready to go, just like this guy. That's fantastic. Now, how do we know that our avocado is ripened? You want to gently feel it. You don't want to squeeze it. Obviously, you'll be making guacamole in your hands. So just give it a gentle squeeze right by the tip there. OK, that's perfect. Right then, hope that answered your question, Kayla. Avocados are one of the most healthy fruits you can actually eat. Now, Chef, how about another question? Bring it are you on. feeling good? I'm feeling real. You're motoring through these. That's really cool. This one comes from Hayden. I love making fresh lemonade, but I always go through so many lemons. So my question for you is, how do you get the most juice out of a lemon? OK. First thing to do, start with your lemons at room temperature. Second, I like to roll them on the cutting board. And basically, that's going to break up all the pulp inside and give you a, a little bit of an advantage already. We're going to cut it in half. And one other thing that I use is a little reamer. And you're going to squeeze the lemon around the reamer as you turn both pieces here. And look at all that juice coming out. Wow. Yeah. So Hayden, I hope the juice is worth the squeeze. 
All right, we have so much more to come, including Chef Goving showing us 10 minutes is more than enough time to make a tasty, easy, healthy meal. But first, it's time for a recipe rehab pop quiz question. Which of the following is full of a good fat and can help you keep your heart healthy? Is it A, ham, B, salmon, C, steak, or D, lamb? The answer when we return to Recipe Rehab. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Recipe Rehab. Before the break, we asked you, which of the following is full of a good fat and can help you keep your heart healthy? Is it A, ham, B, salmon, C, steak, or D, lamb? If you said B, you were right. Salmon is high in a healthy type of fat called polyunsaturated fat. Eating this type of healthy fat can help lower blood pressure and cholesterol, which then can help your heart be healthier. Now let's get back to the kitchen. Welcome back to a special episode of Recipe Rehab. We're here with one of the kings of Recipe Rehab, Chef Govin. Now, Chef Govin is a veteran of competition in this kitchen, and you're very nice enough to let us pick your brain with some amazing questions. Our next question comes from Sheridan. Do you like rehabbing other families' recipes? And why did you become a chef? I love rehabbing the recipes, actually. The greatest thing for me is cooking for my little daughter. She's just turning a year and really just doing whatever I can now to give her, you know, just a really good start in life and just keeping things as healthy as possible. Right on. And um, why did you become a chef? What got me in the kitchen was really working with my mother. She enjoyed entertaining so much. So I always, you know, spent time with her in the kitchen. You know, I just really loved it. I got a very young start when I worked for Wolfgang Puck when I was 13 years old. Probably one of the best summer jobs and you know, any kid had ever seen. Uh, did a full-on apprenticeship with Wolfgang and just really, really learned everything. So what made you want to be a chef that cooks healthy? I've always enjoyed cooking healthy. I feel better knowing that if I'm feeding the masses that everybody is eating as healthy as they possibly can. Now we have another question for you and it comes from Cassidy. I enjoy kicking in the kitchen with my mom, but there's always so many spices. How do you choose between your favorites? Wow, so which are your favorites? I start with the type of food that I'm going to be cooking. You know, so if your mother enjoys cooking Mexican food, you'd probably want to start with one of the chilies. This is a little cayenne pepper. It's really nice, hot heat. Uh, we have a little cumin next to that. That's what they put in a lot of the different salsa verdes and whatnot. It's just a really nice, bold flavor. You know, if, if you enjoy cooking Asian food, it's like I'd lean towards uh, using a little bit of ground ginger, which is really nice, and a little bit of garlic, uh, which is something that I'll put in a lot of stir fries and whatnot, and it's really, really simple. And then we have allspice on the end. It's great in desserts, it's great for marinades, for meats and all that. That's a real versatile uh, spice. And what's your favorite spice? My favorite spice is probably chipotle powder. I love that smokiness. It's a real robust spice. Our next question involves an entire recipe for people who are on the go, and it comes from our friend Eden. We're the type of family that's always on the go, and so we tend to pick up fast food a lot. Do you have any quick, healthy recipes that we can make for dinner? So that brings us nicely to my favorite part of this show, the 10-minute cooking challenge. We want you to make us a healthy, tasty, and easy meal in 10 minutes. I can definitely do that. All right, I'm gonna set the clock at 10 minutes, and then you're away. All right, well, what I'm gonna do is a really simple and very delicious stir fry. I'm gonna serve that on a little bit of couscous. What is couscous? It's basically the ground drum wheat. We have the boiling water there. I'm gonna take some plastic and just cover the top of that and let that sort of steam. So it actually steams and cooks in the hot water. That's correct. So while that is actually cooking, I'm gonna go right onto our, our little stir fry here. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of vegetable oil and we have a little bit of shrimp here, which are just frozen and deveined and ready to go. They so don't... the shrimp goes in first. Yeah, they don't take a long time to cook. How do we know our shrimp has been cooked? Uh, you want them to turn that bright orange color. Oh, you you see that? They're starting to turn already. Yeah. So we're going to add some vegetables here that we have as well okay. that have been frozen. And it's just assorted uh, Asian vegetables. There's some snow peas in there, a little bit of baby corn, uh, broccoli, mushrooms, all kinds of good stuff. What are you going to do next? OK, next we're going to add with a little bit of uh, rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, okay. and low sodium, right? A little bit of hoisin sauce. And this is all very bold flavors, you know, but simple. You can get them in any grocery store. How do you turn everything in the pan like that? How do you, <laughs> how do, you do the chef shimmy? It's all in the wrist. OK. Basically, you want to tilt your pan down a little bit like so, uh -huh. and shimmy it down to the base of the pan there, and then just flip it back towards yourself. Amazing. So we're adding a little bit of low-sodium chicken broth here as well. And as you can see now, 
Those shrimp are just about cooked all the way through. We're gonna let all those flavors melt. We put the couscous right in the center of the plate here and pour it right over the couscous. Right on. Wow, that's beautiful. Chef Govin did that whole dish in 10 minutes. Amazing. So, shall we have a taste? Let's do that. Mmm. I can't believe something that tasty and that healthy only took 10 minutes. You saw it right before your very eyes. <laughs> I did. Now, when we come back, we're going deeper into the world of Chef Govin, and he's going to show us some gadgets and, more importantly, how to use them. Don't you go away. We're back with a special episode of Recipe Rehab. The great and powerful Chef Govin is with us, and he's sharing his tricks of the trade. Which brings us to our next question, and that comes from Marcus. I love freezer pops, but I know they're very unhealthy for you. Is there any healthier ways you can make a freezer pop but still have it be delicious? So that's a very good question. How can we make freezer pops healthier? It's so easy. You got to make them yourself. You buy a simple mold, which you can get at just about any store these days. They come in all different shapes and sizes and whatnot. And what I've done a lot of is using fresh juice. Ah. So, you know, you can take pomegranate juice, which is obviously very, very healthy. You can layer it. So pomegranate juice, a little bit of orange juice, and cranberry juice. And so make it. So you can have 50-50. Exactly. No, you oh, can, it, it comes out really nice, just like that. These are just two juices that we've used. And one of the other things that I like to do as well is take a little bit of yogurt, Get it in a little cup here if you don't feel like splurging and buying a mold. Stick a little stick in it like so, pop it in the freezer. Come back in a couple hours when it's settled and look what you have here. We have frozen yogurt. Frozen yogurt, frozen yogurt just like that. But literally just about anything. You can take some chocolate milk, strawberry milk, whatever you're in the mood for. Here we go. And I'm gonna have a taste of this. Oh, delicious. How about another question? Sure. All right. Our next question comes from Lyric. Chef, I'm always fascinated by all these cool gadgets and tools we use in the kitchen. What's your favorite cooking gadget? Lyric, that's a really good question because, as you know, there's so many gadgets in the kitchen. Like, a new one's coming out every single day. I always go back to the basics and the ones that I'll use most often are multi-purpose. Okay. Uh, like this, a fine mesh strainer is one of the things that I love to use for soups to give them that really nice, silky consistency. You can actually sift flour in it. You know, any dry goods, you can just run right through here. Real simple. You could even strain your pasta. You could even strain your pasta. Very that? small pasta, yes, indeed. Um, and then this, obviously, everyone knows what a microplaner is. Uh, so many uses. I love to do cheese on it. You know, you can make a nice Parmesan cloud to go with a beautiful pasta Alfredo or anything. Uh, it's great for garlic. It's great for nutmeg. It's great for lemon zest, any sort of citrus. Great for chocolate. Uh, excellent for chocolate, yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah. Uh, but just a really good solid tool. And then this, the almighty coffee grinder. Not really? just for coffee. We grind a lot of different types of peppers at home. Um, you know, the black, the white, the dried green. Peppercorns are really great. So you take peppercorns mm -hmm. and spices and you make your own blends? Definitely. Really? Yeah, it's fantastic. And the, the great thing with that, it's cheaper to buy spices in, when they're whole and in bulk like that. Um, and you just grind them yourself. If you're making a nice blend, you take the whole cumin seed, mustard seed and all that, grind it up. It's, it's fresher, it's way more aromatic. Um, and more affordable. Okay, cool. Chef Govin, next we have a question from River. I don't like when our brown sugar gets hard. How can we soften our brown sugar? That's definitely a good question because when your brown sugar gets hard, it doesn't mean that it's bad at all. What happened was basically all the moisture was released out of that brown sugar. Okay. So it got rock hard. So what I do, is I'm gonna sneak in a little piece of bread and seal it up really, really tightly. A Couple days later, that's what you have. So what does the bread do? Uh, the bread actually adds a little bit of moisture. So you put the bread in with the hard sugar. Right. The bag, it being sealed in, mm -hmm. the moisture's released. Correct. And then the sugar breaks up. Softens up again. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful way to rehydrate your brown sugar. Now we have plenty more still to come, including to find out what's in Chef Govin's basket. So don't you go away. We're back with a special episode of Recipe Rehab. Chef Govin has been kind enough to share all of his expert knowledge with us today. We've learned you can cook a great meal in 10 minutes. We found out his favorite gadgets. And in a minute, we'll find out the thing I most like to ask a chef. What's in your basket? But before we do that, let's keep the questions rolling. And we have one here from Jack. 
I love making tacos, but I use a lot of oil. Do you have any suggestions for healthy tacos? I love healthy tacos. It's definitely one of my go-to snacks. It's so easy. Uh, so what I like to use is a fresh corn tortilla. I'm gonna put a little nonstick spray on it, heat them up directly on the flame. We're gonna give the tortilla a slight char, you know, which is just gonna add to the flavor. It'll give it a little bit of crunch, you know, which I really do love in a taco. And I'm taking a simple baking dish, and I'm just sort of gonna curl that tortilla around the edge. So you pop this in the oven for about eight minutes or so until it's nice and crisp. Uh -huh. Pull it out, and that's what you have. That's great. Should we fill it and try it? I think we should. Okay. The filling is obviously very important. Uh, you don't want to do something that's saturated in fat. Right here, we have a little bit of lean ground turkey. Super healthy, very, very good for you. And then you have your own fixings here. But just keep it light. You know, you don't have to go heavy on the cheese and the sour cream and all that stuff. Just keep some fresh vegetables. I like a little bit of tomato in mine. A few uh, cilantro leaves there, a little onion, and just to squeeze a lime, you know, and I'm there. If you have some nice uh, hot sauce at home, it's kind of all you need, right? So we've got this beautiful baked taco shell. Fresh ingredients inside there, with no oil, just a little bit of spray to crisp it up gently. Beautiful. Mm. Well, thanks, Chef. That tasted excellent. Now, here comes another question from Adam. I love salmon, but it can get a little dry and chewy. Do you recommend any ways to make it juicier? That is such a great question. My favorite way is probably to do it in papillot style. Okay. Maybe like in a bag. If you don't have a parchment paper, you can use a little bit of foil. And let me show you one of my simple, easy, and delicious ways to do so. With a little bit of fresh spinach. And I'm gonna season my salmon here with just a little bit of salt and a little pepper on the, on the salmon there. And just a couple turns on the spinach. And what we're gonna do next is just place that salmon directly on top of the spinach. I'm gonna get a couple of thyme sprigs, a few slices of lemon, and what we're gonna do here is like seal this up. So it's gonna lock in the moisture before we even put it in the oven. So we're actually gonna cook the salmon in its own juice. Okay. Yeah, so that's going to cook everything. So and we're not adding any butter, or any oil, so or anything to this. a steamed meal in a bag. That's it, pop it in the oven for 10 minutes. So basically all we're gonna do Take a little paring knife, and you want to re be very, very careful of uh, all the steam that's going to be coming out of there, because it's going to be nice and hot. What you see here it is poached or self-steamed, because it's nice and tender. Mm -hmm. And all that flavor has been locked in, so the thyme and the lemon, all those aromatics really penetrate the salmon and just take it to the next level. So that was a very, very healthy and very, very simple way to do your salmon. Our next question comes from Crystal. When I go to the grocery store with my dad, I usually don't know what to get. What healthy ingredients do you buy at the store? Well, this is one of my favorite questions. Chef, what's in your basket? You know, I'm gonna start with this. Kale is one of those things that I just love. It's so good for you. It's really versatile. You can eat it raw in a really nice salad. You can cook it, steam it with a little bit of onion and garlic, and kale is just one of my favorite greens. Absolutely. And with kale goes good olive oil. Always in my pantry, without a doubt. I like several different types, ranging in flavor from a fruitiness to a little acidity. A lot of grains, all different types of beans. I always buy the dried beans. I, I just really don't care too much for the texture of the canned beans. Okay. Beans are great for soups. They're great so for- you got beans, you got lentils. Mm -hmm. Those are split green beans. And then we have some pinto beans as well. Great for, you know, if you're making like a hummus, you, can, you don't necessarily have to use garbanzo beans. You can use split peas, you can use pinto beans or black eyed peas, whatever you have. Equally delicious. It can take any sort of flavor profile you want to add to that, whether it be roasted garlic or roasted pepper. I love quinoa. Quinoa. It's been around forever. Absolutely forever. And now it's a new superfood. So if you're gluten-free, that is the food to have. And then all the basics. All you know, right. Good sweet onions, a couple carrots, all different kinds of potatoes. And with this, you can make a meal that'll last for weeks. You know, you make a good pot of beans. There's so much that you can do with those beans. You can turn it into soup, stews, and whatnot. And all you do is buy a little protein when you need it every day, and you're set. Well, guys, we are out of time. Chef Govin, we've had a fantastic time hearing your answers. And thank you so much for taking all of our questions. If you're looking for even more cooking tips and healthy recipes, then head on over to recipe slash TV show.
thanks to Chef Govin and an even bigger thanks to you, our viewers, for your great questions. We hope you've picked up some great tips and tricks that will make your meals even more tasty, easier to make, and most importantly, healthy. We'll see you next time on Recipe Rehab. Bye. Close captioning and other promotional considerations for Recipe Rehab are provided by...